Following polyclitus, this face is divided into three equal parts, the forehead, the nose, and the chin. The features convey the notion of the beautiful and the valiant in one man, Doriferous, the spear bearer. This basalt head is actually a Roman copy of an original by Polyclitus. Here we see the Greek love of individual achievement. They valued it above the status of birth or wealth. The aim of Greek education was to create a man who was beautiful and virtuous, trained in music, dance, and in physical exercise. The helmeted Athena was the Greek goddess of war. She was said to spring fully formed and already armed from the head of Zeus, her father. Athena, the warlike virgin, was full of energy and action. However, she avoided senseless violence, choosing instead to win her battles with boldness and wisdom. The statue is a Roman copy of the work of the Greek artist Cressilus. Athena was also the goddess of craftsmen. She almost lost her virginity to Hephaestus, the god of smiths, but she vanished from her bridal bed at the moment of truth. Not only was Athens, now the capital of Greece, named after her, but the Parthenon was erected in her honor. The work is similar to a gigantic statue of Athena, which once formed the focal point of the Parthenon. This calm, assured, and handsome warrior once embodied the might of Athens at its height. It was she who helped the hero Odysseus on his epic voyage back home to Athens at the end of the Trojan Wars. The long gown is the ceremonial dress of Greek women, the pelos. Like many civilizations before them, the ancient Greeks invented their architecture in the service of their gods. At the Hermitage, the hall of 20 columns is a recreation of a Greek temple. The Greeks first began to build temples in about the 7th century BC. In the centuries that followed, they refined the design in successive structures until, in the 4th century BC, the most perfect temple ever built was created, the Parthenon. The wooden roof was the only weak point the mosaics and paintings that once covered the floors and walls were destroyed when the roofs were burned by invaders or collapsed, letting in the wind and weather. Unlike the paintings sealed in Egyptian tombs, these artworks were vulnerable to destruction. Because of its elegance, this water vessel was named Regina Vasorum, or Queen of Vases. Although it dates from the 5th century BC, it is perfectly preserved. It was discovered in a tomb at the ancient city of Campania in Italy. It was probably made for export to Italy. Sophisticated Greek techniques of vase production, which included relief figures and polychrome painting, led to a strong export business. A ring of gilt lions and fantastic beasts both Eastern motifs encircle the vase. Highlighting the Hermitage's collection is a group of pottery figure vessels found in the grave sites of distant Greek colonies. Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. The siren, half woman, half bird, was likely used to store fragrant oil. 
The soft coloring and light gilding of this vessel shows the typical Greek use of color. In the Sphinx, we see the classically beautiful face and breasts of a woman, combined with the body of a lion and the painted wings of a bird. The figure of the Sphinx is borrowed from 7th century BC Egyptian art. Actually, in Egypt, the Sphinx did not have wings. Zeus is pictured in this cameo from the 3rd century BC in the Greek colony of Alexandria. Also from Alexandria comes the famous Gonzaga cameo, portraying the pharaoh and his wife. This ornament is almost as valuable for its history as for its beauty. It once belonged to the Gonzagas, the Dukes of Mantua in Renaissance times. In 1794, Napoleon took it from the Vatican as part of the spoils of war. In 1814, after the Russians defeated Napoleon, Josephine presented it to Tsar Alexander I, who placed it in his personal collection here in the Hermitage. Now let us turn to the refined and intimate world of private family life in ancient Greece. In this hermitage room, surrounded by a colonnade, we are whisked back to an antique house. These houses usually were built without windows, but the room surrounded an interior courtyard open to the sky. Statuettes of lively, playful children were particularly popular, like this boy riding a dolphin. By the Hellenistic era, the 3rd to the 1st centuries BC, statuary had become lively and naturalistic. Boy with a duck is a Roman copy of a Greek statue. In the joyful naturalism of this plump child, we see that Greek sculpture has completely liberated itself from the static, archaic forms of representation. Even the gods are depicted.